Hi, Hi Huns! Welcome to Part-Time Mums, Full-Time Huns, the podcast. Episode 3! Today we'll be continuing on from episode 2, talking all about relationships. And um, we're going to be talking about whether you need to give your all to someone. Because obviously we left off last time talking about going on a girls' night out and feeling like you should. Um, so yeah, so we're going to be talking all about that, all about sex, all about breakups. And yeah. But first, we're going to do... O-O-T-P, outfit of the podcast, Libby. Okay, so today I am rocking a white jumper. Yes. Black skinny jeans, which are cutting me open. Yeah. Vans, which are quite tight, if I'm completely <laughs> honest. No socks. <laughs> and I've got a necklace on with tits. Yeah, love that. And my hair is seen better days. No, it's all right, it's down. But, um, Straight. Yeah. yeah, it's all right. Front bangs. I have on Adidas white t-shirt, fresh. Um, thing is, is once you wash it, it's never like this ever again. So I'm just making the most of it. Um, mum jeans from Misguided. I'll put the link in the bio, joking. Um, Converse, <laughs> no socks. Don't know why we're not wearing socks today. Maybe because it's Friday. They're all in the wash. Um, yeah, they're in the wash. Um, anyway, back to real life. We, yeah, like Libby said, do you ever give your all to one, like to one person? And for me, I would say, I'm not talking about your life, like you, what you do, like if you go out or do you stop all that. I'm talking about your soul. Yeah. Like that, you as a person, your individual soul that you've spent your whole life fucking up, making it better, realising what you want. Because eventually you do get there, I think. Definitely. I think it's taken me 30 plus years to actually get to a place that I'm... I know what I want from life and what makes me happy, the people that make me happy, what triggers me not to be happy, people that just aren't, they're just not valid anymore, gone, cut them off. I don't think you should ever give your whole soul to one, and I'm married, and I yeah. don't think that. Maybe that's from what I've been through, um, maybe it's a wall that's never going to come down, I just think that you need to keep a little bit for you. Yeah, I think definitely going into a relationship you need to hold back a little bit because you're damaged from before like every, potentially yeah like everyone has experiences in their past which you carry with you um but i do think i've given my whole soul to my husband and it might sound cheesy but he is like everything and he knows me inside out yeah i wouldn't say i've given everything because i still have my life i still have my friends da, 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 da. but in terms of like my soul i would say i've definitely given it to him and i've given it to you yeah love you yeah i think i do i am a hopeless romantic always have been watched far too many disney films and that hype when you're a little girl and you think that you're yeah. gonna have a baby no you're gonna get married buy a house of a white fence have a dog and everything's going to be shit and fairy dust. That hasn't happened for me. So my happiness is now, and it's not my, I'm not that person that's landed God on my two feet and gone, this is my life. I have stepchildren. I've got two gorgeous children. Well, they're all gorgeous. You know, four children by marriage. And I still don't own my own house. Yeah. And, um, and I think that, my version of, of that, my version is not the same as what, what's put out there. Because love and life and relationships isn't like the movies. And that's half the problem these days. And, I mean, I always think, when am I going to say to Ava? Like, you, yeah, it's very rare that you're going to meet Prince Charming without kissing about five million frogs. Like, that's all right. <laughs> Does Prince Charming exist? I think, in terms of, like kissing the frogs i think that guides you to a place where you will eventually find someone um and i think people think like oh god i was with him and then i was with him and it didn't work out like is it me no like it just means that you both weren't meant to be for whatever reason relationship broke down you ended things because you didn't want the same things you oh, they were cheating on you obviously that's leave that alone you were cheating on them you were cheating on them or maybe I definitely think it's a case of like right person, wrong time. Yeah. That's weird as well. Yeah. Like, Have you ever thought about that? Have yeah, you been like, with someone that 
could have been Prince Charming, but you let but you let him go, or they let you go. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think I always wonder, like, have I ever been with people that that treated me like shit and cheated on me? Like, do they ever think about me now? Of course they do. Do you reckon? Yeah. Yeah, of course the one I that got away. Yeah, <laughs> yes, she was. At the time, I weren't running, but now I am. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't fucking run for nobody. No, I just think um, you can meet someone, and they could potentially be like perfect for you. But you are. It's just the wrong time. You're both going different directions, and I do think though, when it's supposed to be, it will be like. When I met my husband, it was like long. It was lo- like longed out. It was stressful. Now we are literally like we've slotted into place. We've got our children. We're married. We've got our house. Like everything about him is perfect. And it took me kissing a lot of frogs to get to him. And and also, I think anything worth it takes. You know, it take a. It takes time. You're not gonna have. You have to, but for for something to work, you both got to, both want the same things. Yes, the end result, like not both want the same thing separately, obviously, because then that wouldn't be together. But like your individual needs, you have to do that for yourself. But you have to both meet at some point. Like, what do you want to do when you're older? Do you want a family? Do you not want a family? Like, you have to be on the same page. And if that person isn't supporting you, and you're not supporting them, it's dead in the wall. For me, there's no point. Yeah, definitely. Don't stay in a relationship. Also, if you've been in a relationship for a long time, don't fucking stay in it if it's if it's if it's shit. And by shit, I mean I don't mean boring, okay? Because all relationships will go through a stale patch, and all relate. What do we call it? A blip. You are going to go through hard times, and you are one person at some point is going to test that other person to the point where you're like, oh my god, I can't do this anymore. I- I'm done. But if you have to work out, like, can I be with this? Is it something we can work through together? Is it something that I need to work through on my own? Is it worth it? Because I tell you now, this whole grass is greener thing, it fucking ain't. Maybe if more people spent time watering their own grass, not other people's, not her grass, your grass, <laughs> it might grow into something a little bit, you know, better. And, and you need to help each other be the best version of yourself yeah definitely don't just get don't just end something because believe me the amount of people that i know that have jumped ship and made stupid stupid choices because they thought that other person had was a better option again back to but a better choice could give them make them more happy yeah i think like with a lot of cheating you see like these people leave someone for someone else that they've cheated with and then they don't even stay with that person no so like sometimes yeah the grass may be greener because you're in the wrong place but i just just end it end it and then but i also think as well it's like if you are if that person that you're with gives you the ick and you literally can't stand them just end it move on you don't need to start texting like kevin from down the road at the shops just end it a lot it. of people down these roads where we live <laughs> <laughs> kevin they're and brian all, they're all up to something <laughs> yeah it's all very like suspicious busy busy around these parts <laughs> never seen these since fucking dead round here um yeah i think that um there's two it really irritates me that you have a choice whether or not to cheat and most of the time do you know what it is i think people cheat people cheat because they're not getting attention where they should be okay and if it's a woman i would say i'm not i can't speak on behalf of men so before everyone jumps on me i'm a woman so i'm talking <laughs> about women women will always have that chat on the sofa okay you come downstairs you geared yourself up about it and you say like, i'm not happy you're doing this you're doing this you're doing this and you're at your wits end they're not listening to you because they've switched off because you ne- they know you ain't ever gonna leave you're never gonna leave you're always there moaning yeah that's all they see it as white noise and then they tell you that they gave you the disclaimer at the beginning of the relationship yeah that is a thing i'm not romantic you can't so. change people as well if no. someone says that to you at the beginning 
you've got no right two years later to start going oh for god's sake like why do you never why do you never like surprise me maybe they're not spontaneous you knew that at the beginning and i think that women emotionally check out long before they actually leave yeah definitely some men as well because like i said to you before unless they've got a lifeboat there set up they live with you it's a lot harder just to leave we're living in the real world yeah you've got mortgages kids houses tenancy agreements you're living in the mum's spare bedroom or whatever you can't just up and leave without having a plan so people either start cheating then make a plan to leave or they have best of both but that can't last forever no so regardless on how you start how you end up whether you want to be with that person or not generally think you can't well you definitely can't have both and it's never going to end well for either party because i tell you what men that cheat that then leave you for the other woman okay they'll always want you back yeah or a hundred percent you may not think it at the time if you're that woman that's been left and married men yeah short disclaimer they ain't ever gonna leave their wife no and i don't black if it's a single woman yeah and you're if you're if, if a married guy if you fall for a married guy first of all they're gonna say to you they're not in, in the same bed okay then they're gonna say oh, yeah. shit i'm sleeping on the sofa yeah, yeah yeah you're gonna hear all that they will never ever ever very very unlikely in fact, I don't know anyone that that's like, they've actually left their wife. Yeah, like if you're the other woman, no. you've just got to, yeah. It's and who not wants to happen. be the other woman? What? So you you you're gonna shag him, have a nice weekend where he said he's in a meet away for a work meet, and he's gonna go back to his wife and kids, and she's gonna put up a picture. And don't be fooled by the fact that you think she don't know, because some women, yeah, just want their life and don't want to upset their kids. That's another podcast that they'll stay <laughs> in that relationship. They know. They know because they have got that feeling that I spoke about before in their gut that women ain't stupid. You ain't stupid if someone, but some people are ignorant to it. I think they just, they just want an easy life. Yeah. And that's so sad, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. But I think, um, obviously, like we said, like if you are in a relationship and your partner's cheated on you, whether you're a man or a woman, it's never the other person's fault so it's always yeah, don't be, start going in yeah, on the other person it's always going to be your partner's fault um but then you're probably so emotionally attached that when you find out your boyfriend's cheating yeah what are you going to do you start going to start going on her instagram like i said to you in the first one you're going to start looking her up you're going to start obsessing about this person which a isn't real you can't get a perception unless you've got a bloody stream of their messages i just think it, it just makes me feel sick once you start messaging someone else, that's cheating to me. I've had so many people go, that's not cheating though. All right, babe, you think that's fine? To me, that's not. It's intent. You shouldn't be having those conversations with someone else. You're in a relationship with me. Yeah. You know? And do you... Like, it's side. Yeah, but I think women do do it as well. And I think men have a different approach, don't they? I think women get away with it for longer. Yeah. I'd say. Yeah women are more cautious more cautious and then i think like the, the guy the that go- they're cheating on you with is less likely to give up the game yeah because they're happy because yeah. they're getting shagged yeah and like yeah and i think also men the man that you're in a relationship with if you're cheating on him like he probably won't notice do you no. know what i mean it's like one of especially those if your relationship's gone stale he won't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm t- he won't. He won't even notice. It's like when you go to the hairdressers. Ah, oh, what are you been so, babe? I've had my hair done. Oh, don't look any. Di- I've had a full head of highlights and I've got dark hair. Okay. Been oh, I, I, I didn't notice. I thought it was your eyebrows. Oh, have you had your lashes? No. <laughs> no. But no, like, do obviously. I think that men can be insecure and like definitely they will feel the same about your phone and things like that men just men haven't got that vocal explosion where they go crazy if you are due your period and you think your man is cheating on you okay whether you've seen anything or not i would if i was that guy i'd start writing down when she's due on because if you if you're in a week before that <laughs> happens fucking hell i've been there i'll be i'll go from naught to 100 i'll pack your shit and ring your mum i don't care yeah and then it's over and you want them back yeah but with some people i've got that was it really uh, yeah with some people i like with breakups i think i've got to put in my life it, i've been in so many relationships just i've oh, been cheated on or whatever and then i got to a point where i was like nah, do you know what i can't do this anymore and that's what i mean by 
I'd emotionally checked out. There was no one else involved in this relationship. And I'd had enough. It wasn't working. And I didn't want... I, I cared about him. But it weren't working. I had enough. So I did the right thing. Not in the right fucking way, may I add. I'm not saying... Jesus, it weren't in the right way. Um, his stuff went over the balcony, probably. But I just... I just I did the right thing and I ended the relationship. Yeah, definitely. That's what you've got to do. But that's one out of ten, you yeah. know, that I did it the right way. Um, and I think that being the other woman, going back to that, the reason why you're pro- because you will start putting pressure on that guy when you're going to leave her. I, 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 I want to be with you. Yeah. Because you're emotionally connected to that person. Definitely. When are you going to leave her? Why are you still with her? Like, it's not about the kids. You can still be a good dad. Like, I, I want to be with you. I want to be able to go out. Because I think at first, it all starts a bit dirty. It's all a bit yeah. secretive, exciting. Your wife's at home, right? Cooking you, texting you, going, dinner's ready at five, spaghetti bolognese. Um, can you empty the dishwasher as well? And um, Archie's got football on Sunday, if you can take him, right? That's his life okay with emails and work or whatever then you've got this this other bit of excitement the other woman with the honeymoon period again yeah definitely it's all exciting wants to ask him how his day is wants to blow smoke up his ass what and then i guarantee that the other woman's like oh she doesn't appreciate you that's that's the problem (laughs) he's like yeah yeah you know yeah i'll do everything no you fucking and i'm like no you fucking don't you know (laughs) the wife is like no you hello and I think that if I was in that situation, I'd ring her up. I'd be like, do you know what? Yeah? You want his kids? You want to wash his shitty pants? Have him. But that's not, that again, that's not, he will never, le- he'll never, le- he'll never get to that point. Because even if you find out, they're going to do that whole denying thing and turn it yeah. round on you. Yeah, definitely. It's like trying, it's like cat and mouse. But it's toxic cat and mouse. Cat and mouse, Tom and Jerry's at the beginning. These are two psycho, th- th- this is toxic behaviour that you're going to keep going around on a merry-go-round and life is too short. I keep looking at the time and it's 11-11 all the time. That's so weird, isn't That's it? That's really weird. I don't mean to get... Spirit- this keeps <laughs> happening to me. <laughs> well, make a wish. She's making the wish. Okay, I've done Okay, it. brilliant. So, um, obviously... Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, we're talking about breakups um, and what, what leads to them. So... I don't actually want to talk about like full on relationships here. Have you been dating someone and then you get the ick I mean, and you're like, I've got to get out of this? Yeah. Yeah, I have, yeah. It's, it's I awful. didn't know what the ick was till it was actually on Love Island. And then um, I, um, sorry, my boss is ringing me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I went a bit quiet. Um, and then I said to Libby, like, what's all this about the ick? And she was like, we don't know what the ick is and I was like no and then she explained it to me and I was like oh like when it gets that point and even when they breathe like it annoys it you it literally turns your stomach so you go from looking at them like oh I love it when we go for dinner are you eating that carbonara and then you watch them like do you need to slurp that anymore <laughs> like why do you always <laughs> order the same thing like it's like everything annoys you and they don't do stuff right and then they can't when you're in that point as a woman the guy's got no chance anyway no you, you men don't you I don't think out. men get the it no they're not that they're not that involved <laughs> I <don't think> they <laughs> really care <laughs> but like it's also like on on a first date and getting the ick like there's nothing worse like you're so hyped up and you're like yeah this is gonna be amazing and then all of a sudden halfway through the date you're like oh god I need to go home yeah and I think you yeah, you, you don't want to go any further with that. You, you already know by that point. <laughs> um, I was seeing this guy and um, I, don't, I can't remember. It was so long ago. I can't remember if we've gone on a date before. I know he took me for coffee afterwards and I was really young and I just was still drink, drinking like Nesquik. There was no way I was having like an espresso, which is what he had. But I went to his house and um, he was a lot older than me because I used to lie about my age. <laughs> Now I wish I could. Now she still does, but it's younger. Now I'm younger. <laughs> now I'm 24. Okay. Um, and if I get ID'd in a shop, fireworks go off in oh, the background. Yeah. I love it. But that doesn't really happen that often. Um, and I lied about my age. So he thought I was older. So that's the only... Okay, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt that he would think, because I was more mature, that I would appreciate what was going to happen next. So we're in his... 
we're in this lounge and um he got down on his knees <laughs> i don't know why i just remember it being like why are you on your knees like you're small <laughs> and he got he got like an acoustic wooden what? guitar he was really small like obviously he was like on his knees like coming going were you toward... standing up or no i was on the, st- on the sofa okay. but i was uncomfortable i was like on the edge yeah and it was like a puffy sofa i just <laughs> i remember it and he came out from right mysteriously from behind the curtain with this like wooden guitar and he was like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna play you a song and i was like oh my god like in my head like oh my god please stop and then he did this like strum and instantly i was like if I'd have been Simon Cow, I'd have hit that buzzer because it just wasn't. I mean, he was really sweating as well, like on his head. But I'd never noticed this before. Just on his forehead. <laughs> and then he was like, um, the sun coming up easy. And I was like, um, he was like, like, like jigging away, came tumbling down. And I was like, oh my God. And I was like, the only thing I could think of, not because I was young, but being young, I was like, I need to go to the toilet. He was pissed off because I stopped him <laughs> mid Paolo Natini. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He just got his, that thrummer thing out, like, blah, 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 on this thing, getting into the beat. And I was like, I need to go to the toilet. So I went upstairs and, um, First of all, I was thinking, for fuck's sake, like, why is he playing this? Why is he playing serenading me with a wooden guitar? He's not even that good. <laughs> then I felt bad because that's horrible. And then I was having a wee and then I like, looked over and there was like this wicker thing, like a, like a unit. They were like the in thing. Yeah, 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 they were. Even now they're like 100 quid in B&M. Like, don't buy that. Like, you put something on it, it like rocks. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was like, oh. So like when I washed, I'm like, he must have thought I was having a poo by this point because I was out there for ages, and I started looking in his drawers. And oh, Mister Innocent downstairs, okay, third drawer down, there was yellow butt plugs. Now that's okay, but considering that he was singing Paolo Nutini, and, and this then, again just yeah. cements like a the ick with the singing, weird sweaty head on his knees. I didn't even know if he'd got up from the floor by this point. Um. It had all gone a bit quiet. And then I started panicking, like, oh, my God, he's singing to me, but there's, like, yellow butt plugs upstairs. He's going to want to use the yellow butt plugs. Like, plug. for God's sake. Like, I was young. Like, I was, a, oh, I was legal. Like, I was I 17. I think, like, yeah, being this young. This guy, I thought I was, like, 23, 20, yeah. however, a lot older. I said I was a lot older. Um, and again, girls, going back, this guy, <laughs> going back sweaty to this guitar, guy, the sweaty guitar guy, like, I was 17, and... Um, my dad used to drop me to the train station in my suit to go to work. My first job, just blagging at life. And I met this guy because he kept driving past the train station in a Subaru Oppressor, which was a mint colour. And it had a dump valve. And for anyone, who, I, I don't know about cars, but for anyone back in the day that used to hang around in Sainsbury's car park in Novas, a dump valve is something that goes... Ink-tsh. Yeah, oh, I bet you loved it. And I thought, <laughs> he was like driving past me like, oh yeah. Oh yeah, like with his music. I thought, what of an absolute babe. He weren't that much of a babe, but it's the car. and he was so confident because he had this car. That's what it was, and he had the guitar, car, guitar, butt plugs. He had it all going on, okay. And he he drove like in the little bit, like the bus bit, and asked me for my number. I just gave it to him. First of all, that that that's not normal to like pick girls up. Yeah, that I think <sighs> you wouldn't do that now, would you? Would you? I think people do. I think people do. Like, p- men just have, like, this confidence that they would can they be ask like, you. Add me on Insta, Snapchat. Oh, yeah, they'd be like, here's, here's my tag. Here's my snap. <laughs> so the moral of that story is, um, she got the ick and she got out. Don't stay just because they've got the guitar yeah, out. Yeah, I don't know how I got out of that situation, but obviously I'm here to tell the tale, so I did. And I saw him again, okay? Oh, my God. Okay, she didn't get out of it. I did see him again. That's when he took me for coffee. And he'd sometimes say it to his leg. Probably <laughs> down to it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got it from he me. He couldn't walk it. <laughs> Next time I saw him, he had like a crap. <laughs> he probably tripped over all the butt plugs I'd like left on the floor. <laughs> oh, um, but he then took me for coffee and I had to like help him out like his carer. Oh my God. And um, I remember this just saying, just getting worse. Yeah, honestly, this is, this is true story. Like, hi honey. Um, and yeah, it just wasn't work. It just wasn't working. Like he, I just wanted the car. 
I think. Oh, but yeah, the ick was definitely there. Like, I think most girls would probably love their boyfriend to sing to them, wouldn't they? Yeah, but I'm I find on. that quite cringy. It was so cringe. I'd literally met this guy, like, went for a drink the first night. You can't really gauge much in that. Wanted to see him again. Thought about the car. Thought he was older. He believed that I was older. He obviously fucking didn't, but there we go. And then, yeah, it was a guitar thing for me. And I think with the ick, you just need to... Um, if it annoys you that much at the beginning, it ain't going to change. Like, you just you just need to be... Just be mindful and be open about what you want. Definitely. Don't drag shit out because you're only, one of you is going to end up cheating or it's going to be one of you falls falls and the yeah, other person's just not going to not going to be on <laughs> thinking that they're just going to be thinking that it's like fun or like to play guitars to or whatever like i don't know just be open about it i think like obviously a lot of the time like with rebounds you'll just be with anyone won't you oh, i'm literally like the queen of re- are you <sighs> I've not really I I met Dan like when I was 19 so I only had like a few years experience before but um I think it's probably because I'm older than you yeah you've had a few few more but I've definitely had rebounds yeah and then I you forced yourself to like yeah them. you force yourself to like them and they turn up in flares and you're like oh my god or like corduroy jeans oh god brown trainers oh god brown loafers remember when they were a thing <laughs> And it goes from literally Megan. you being crying, okay? So let's just say breakups. A woman in a breakup, whether you've dumped him or he's dumped you, you're going to cry about it. You're going to oh, put yeah. Beyonce on. You're going to listen to that song. Yeah, you've all got a song in your relationship that you two together loved. You're going to put it on repeat. You're going to cry. You're going to cry so much that it hurts your heart physically. You ring your mum like, I'm never going to meet anyone again. Like, it's me. It's me. Like, I'm so sad. Everything on TV is about love. P.S. I love you comes on. Everyone's in a relationship. Suddenly you walk down the road and everyone's holding hands. Everyone's kissing. And it literally turns you into this person that you just hate relationships. Hate the idea of love. Hate being in a relationship. They're either not talking to you, which drives you nuts. Or they are talking to you and they're being horrible to you. Because boys, move, they've either moved on or they'll just shut you down completely and act like you've never been together in the first place. And that kills, doesn't it? Yeah, like when you see them in Tesco and you're like, shit, 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 I've seen him. I've seen him. What am I going to do? And then you walk past each other and act like you didn't even see each yeah. other. That's so, so weird. That is so weird. Like, you spent so much time together in a relationship, shared your whole life, and you're just strangers. Like... You said forever, now I drive along past your street. That is true. <laughs> like when she's, whenever I hear that on the radio, like, I know people are annoyed because it's number one. It's been playing on Radio 1 for like 50 it's years. It's number one because we can all relate to yeah. it. Yeah. That's why. Because you, I've had it, like, I wouldn't go up a certain place or go to a certain bar or go to a certain, if yeah, I knew ha- that someone was going to be there. Haven't you had it where you've gone there because you know that they're going to be oh, there? Oh, yeah. Especially, yeah. Like, it's, this is like the younger kid. If I knew they were going to be in there, I'd be like maybe didn't even like it or they took me to that place then you start going there oh fancy seeing you or acting really surprised when they come in because they go there every single friday and uh you've dragged your mate along who told you it was a bad fucking idea in the first place but you were like i'll buy you a drink if you come with me and they're like all right um <laughs> and then you think they're going to be really happy to see you even though they've told you they don't want to be with you if they've cheated on you and then they see you and they turn to their mates and go for fuck's sake psycho's over there and yeah. you're like waving at And you're smiling like, hi. And three glasses of wine are down and they're still ignoring you. You're crying in the, in the <laughs> toilet to some random person you don't know, talking about him like he's your boyfriend. <laughs> and then you find out he's from fucking her. And- <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean him? Oh, no, he's with me, babe. Um, and that brings me swiftly on to when your boyfriend moves on and you are the, the ex. And sorry, that was not a mic drop. I just hit the thing with my headphone. <laughs> And then they have an ex. You know, you're the ex and they've got someone new. And ouch. So what about if they've got a new person and you're on your own? And it's the girl they told you (laughs) not not to to worry worry about. about. I have been there, but I broke up with him. Um, Still hurt though, right? But when he got with someone else, I was fucking 
fuming yeah i was like how dare you i'm so in love with you ringing him up like crying like i can't believe you're like like, uh you dumped me though yeah i can't believe you're driving around with her in my car seat (laughs) like what the fuck like uh, and she's got my hoodie you mean my hoodie (laughs) and literally it destroyed me inside texting his mum like remember me yes hi can I come round? <laughs> but I all, I just think like that is going back again to like wanting what you can't have. Like I didn't want to be with him. I split up with him. He was weird. Like, yeah, because as a woman, you forget about all the shit. Yeah. You forget yeah, about yeah, all yeah. the shit they've ever done. The fact they've cheated on you. The fact they didn't want you. The fact that your sex life, you know, is as like, fresh as a day old bit of bread. Yeah, or like it's just dead in the water and you think they're gross. Um, But... Oh God, guys! The DPD guys here, is and he's gonna, he's gonna ask us for a picture. Are we gonna take a selfie? Oh no, it's just a oh, little no, bit. It's just real mail. Oh, what is that? Anyway, um, yeah, that did happen to me. He was like, "Can I take a picture?" And I was like, "A picture? Yeah, sure." <laughs> Actually, posed, and he was like, "Of the parcel," and he still comes here now. It's just really awkward. So I think we've all been through that. But no, back to um, that. Like, if you. Yeah, I had the ick with him, thought he was so weird. He gets a new girlfriend, I'm absolutely mortified. But do you know what I think is worse? Being the new girlfriend and having to deal with the ex. Oh, yeah. And do you know what? When you get to my age bracket, generally, when you get with someone, I can imagine that they're going to have kids. Yeah. And do you know, for speaking from experience, it's so hard on both sides. Like, it's so hard because you have a connection with your ex because whether you like them hate them whatever's happened you have you have to have in an ideal world a good relationship for the sake of your children because your children are the most important thing and you don't just go through the breakup they do but when you get with someone new it's more than likely it's going to stir up old feelings on the other side yeah um you know because someone else is going to be around your child potentially yeah they're sort of taking your family you've got to take other people you can't get too inv- i will do a podcast about that um about sort of modern family and what that looks like for me um but exes are b- bitch crazy yes and when someone's got children with with this crazy person okay first of all in their defense any ex your new boyfriend is going to tell you that they're crazy yeah they're going to be like, oh my God, she was nut- nutter. Have you ever had it where they've gone, my ex is actually really nice, that things just didn't work out? No. No. <laughs> no. But then I've had it where the ex is still like very much like there. Present. It's present and he's had to give her respect over it. Because ugh, I think I was very quick to be like, your fucking ex is so annoying. Like I, she makes my stomach turn. Like why is she still here? But he was dealing with the fact that they she's obviously hurt by the new relationship which is the right way to do yeah that's that's Um, nice really yeah that that is nice but still as a woman i you don't share toys no i'm threatened by you like get away yeah and um i just think like there's nothing more annoying when you've got you're sitting there with your boyfriend having dinner his ex-girlfriend's ringing him ringing him oh, ringing yeah, him ringing yeah, yeah. him turning up at the house crying at the front door also what i would say is if someone keeps having their ex-girlfriend ring like oh, is it their ex honey yeah or are okay. they still together because believe me when i say i've i've fucking seen it all i've heard it all and i've seen it all and th- this does happen so just make sure that it's actually that their relationship's actually ended and i guarantee that if that relationship doesn't last what will happen is um if you cheat on her probably cheat on you because generally that's what happens and they're pigs and they just keep doing it and then you'll go out to um regain your life back and you'll bump into her in the pub pissed and then the hate goes the hate go- your she's best your best friend. mate she is your new best mate <laughs> and if you really want to piss him off may that friendship long last and then all of a sudden you're not enemies you're then swapping stories about how, how he's an asshole and how he cheated on both of you even though he cheated on her with you but no one really talks about that and then he cheated on you with her <laughs> yeah and then we're all just sharing everyone um you know we're all just sharing um i think the thing with exes is to be just be mindful that if someone is saying their ex is crazy like i said to you before no woman no one is cra- you are not crazy 
your feelings, no matter, we all may deal with things in different ways and we all may have responses that it's not all right, okay? There's, you're, you are going to get a better reaction from a man if you're calm and collected, trust me. If you start going in there like a ball in a china shop, he's going to switch off and he'll leave. But you also need to think about with exes and you thinking that you're a psychopath and someone telling you that you're acting not in the right way to a situation, they've made you like that. There's a build-up in that process. And I think normally it comes to a head in a breakup, doesn't it? Yeah. Because you, you can feel like you've got, you've all of a sudden, you started off, what's that girl's name you used before? Is that uh, Anna, oh, yeah. Was it Anna? Yeah, Anna. Anna. She was this confident girl, love life, giving this guy four years... She's we've we've gone four years. Okay. Four, <laughs> four years, years later. Four years. Four years later of her life, <laughs> and now their relationship has ended not on good terms. We don't know what happened, um, and she's broken, and she's done the whole crying thing, and he didn't come back. He didn't come back to her. There's a few texts. There was they maybe let's say they text a bit. They had a couple of shags that made her feel worse. She was then like the girl that he could like ring up at three in the morning, like, are you up? Of course she was up. Um, and I think don't feel like you're alone if you're in that situation where you're not over it. Because you can still you can see other people and have these things again and have flings and I don't know, go to bloody Mali with your mates and you're still not over it, are you? Yeah. I think people think like, God, you know, you've not been with them for six months, like get a grip. If you've definitely been in some sort of emotionally draining toxic controlling you know heavy relationship there's no time on how long you're gonna get you back but you will yeah and you'll have your glow up oh the breakup diet now i think it's not real well it can go either yeah, way, but it can go either way. It. you either eat your feelings or you yeah. don't eat at all yeah but either way it's a glow up and i think yeah because you get yourself back yeah you change your hair color oh yeah you get your lashes done <laughs> If anything ever goes wrong in my life... You change your hair. I do. It's very stressful. Apart from I've got to... It's grown out a bit now, but when I had it cut short with the fringe, I had no really leverage to go anywhere no, else. No, yeah, you had to stay Britney. there for a bit. Um, but I think women are very quick to, again, oh, he doesn't want me, or, oh, I feel really bad about myself, I'm going to change myself. Like, if that makes you feel good, but you've got to be a bit deeper than that. And I think this whole podcast, maybe we've come across like men are pigs and assholes which they can be um but also from my personal experience being in a relationship if you're going to keep saying to someone change change you have to take ownership of what you're doing wrong because you're not perfect i think we all put ourselves on the pedestal it's him it's him or it's her it's her you need to if they're saying to you you're doing this this isn't making me happy and if you're arguing all the time, not about him texting someone else, if it's general arguments, it's you both have to take ownership for that relationship to go further and actually maybe check out and take some time on yourself. Yeah, because I think we are very quick to be like, you're not taking me for dinner. You're not putting balloons up on my birthday. You're not buying me a Cartier ring. When the reality is, is like you... Are you buying him nice stuff? Are you doing nice stuff for And it him? ain't all about that, is it? I no. think it's so much like real love, which it's, sounds so cheesy. But no, like, but if you're sad, real love is knowing that that person is your safe place and you two can just be together and there's no pressure for anything else. And I think men have pressure to bloody be basically rich and like showering girls with all this stuff because obviously they see it online and stuff like that and, and I think, people don't talk about that enough no and i know this podcast we're you know we're talking about generally women and how women are but i just want to say on the other side of that that you need to maybe think before you start going on at him and like thinking that the grass is greener and you're going to go and cheat on him or like end your relationship and then wonder why you're single maybe have a look at the pressure that he's under He's got to fund that five-star hotel. He's got to make sure you get that mulberry bag on your birthday. He, he, you're saying to him, like, oh, I really want to go to so-and-so for dinner. Like, where's all the money coming? But uh, also you're like, I want to get married. I want to get a dog. I want, I want a massive wedding. We need to buy a house. Like, come on, everyone else. You can't have everything. You need, 
and I think you need to maybe cut everyone just needs to cut each other a bit of slack yeah like maybe you should pay for dinner maybe you should I think women are very quick to go oh yeah like women need a voice but we're still like well he should be paying for the date yeah I personally think if a man's taking me out for if he if someone asks to take me out for dinner he pays for the dinner if you ask him you're paying but if I say like I'm gonna like if it's if it's his birthday or whatever then obviously again communicate communicate just have a fucking conversation you talk we all talk to our friends and moan all the time okay if you're ringing up your mate constantly not bothering to ask how they are yeah talking about you and your shit relationship a, your mate's going to start getting really annoyed and not answer the phone because you're not listening to the word they're saying anyway. And secondly, maybe spend a bit more time actually looking where you're both going wrong and if you can fix it. And if you can't, in an ideal world, me and Libby were saying like, why can't people just have a nice breakup where you just go, look, this ain't working. We yeah. need to walk away. Do you think, obviously, after a breakup, you can be friends with an ex? No. No. The only thing, I think you can be amicable with someone potentially that you have children with yeah i think having, if that's a work in progress yeah you, you need to think honey you you've got that person in your life forever yeah so don't just start having kids we're gonna stop we're, we are gonna have another podcast about having children the pressures of that having a kid is not black and white things don't work out that person yeah you're gonna have in your life for the rest of your life potentially so you i think do I think you can just be like, hiya, to an ex? No. Because no. if you can still be like that, there's there's feelings still there. Yeah, and I think you can't move on in a new relationship if you're hanging out with your ex. It's just weird. That is so, so weird. So weird and uncomfortable. But like... All... If my husband's like, yeah, I'm going to go and meet up with my ex for like oh a coffee. Oh my God. I'd fucking You'd kill him. you vomit. Well, it wouldn't happen. No. It just, he wouldn't exist. He'd cease. <laughs> the same as if I was like, yeah, I'm going to go... Like, I just don't... Unless you're like, we're friends before... I think it's just like a mutual respect thing, isn't it? Like, I don't think you'd have... If you're in the right relationship, you maybe wouldn't even need to have that conversation. No. If your ex is still wanting to meet up with you for coffee, they definitely still think you're fire. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, and I do think some people just never... Men and women, I do think that there's people in your life that you'll never get over. Ever. Yeah, I think everyone will have someone that's made a huge impact on yeah. their life. And you just carry it with you don't you but i just think like you cannot have an ex in your life whether you're a man or you're a woman because it's just uncomfortable you can't move forward you they're constantly they're an ex for a reason yeah so so, just leave them there just leave them there like you if if you can't live your life without them you need to look at maybe you you need to build your relationship up but i think a lot of it like (sighs) in staying in like the wrong relationships for example i think it's a pressure to be in those relationships and because you don't want to be single yeah you don't want to be scared single. so like people just like stay in these relationships or they try and stay friends with their ex and things like that just because they think that that's what they have to do and you don't you need to just do your own journey i think the best thing to do yeah is be happy get away from it yeah move away from it if you've got joy just get away from it we're all hanging around like it, it if it wasn't working then it ain't gonna ha- it's not gonna work the second time around third i've done it no it, there's no it's all point great going for a bit the second time. then you have like a bloody you guys on holiday have a sangria and you start talk, talking about what they've done to you in 2008 it doesn't leave you and then no. they're this is you all it is is going around full circle and i think that we are going to do um an episode about mental health um and about therapy and i'm a great advocate in having therapy um if you have the right therapist and there's no shame in that and i think like i said earlier if you find yourself not moving forward and you feel like that it's you nothing is ever one-sided apart from if they cheat because that's just the ultimate disrespect in my opinion nothing is ever you if you've been in a relationship that's left you emotionally damaged and you can't pick yourself up and just take some time out and maybe that is an option for you whether it's someone that you know seeing a therapist you need to work on yourself as one person because if you don't like i said before this wall goes up yeah and this is a wall by like good builder this ain't some shit <laughs> cowboy work 
the next person who may be the person for you might not even be able to get through it yeah and so I you're th- almost in charge of your own destiny aren't you definitely at that point? and i think if you have found someone and they literally bring out the best in you you need to put all your effort into it yeah. and you need to realize that they are your person like if you are sat there on the sofa in the evening on your phone not looking at him not paying him any attention hardly talking to him maybe you need to tonight actually put some effort in and i think it works both ways we're constantly wanting men to give us this effort and take us out do nice things like do everything and for all these us. books like why men love bitches and stuff like that like it's all just a bit old hat that yeah. book was brought out five years ago like i fucking read it then <laughs> but, i bought in it's, like libby said you if things have got to change in relationships like if you want something to last then you both need to work at it otherwise it's just a short fix yeah there's a reason why like your nan and granddad have been together for so long yeah because they ain't got like, snapchat yeah they ain't got snapchat to be sending nudes to another girl like right, they yeah. had to post them and yeah. we all have a choice and that's where i think we're going to wrap this up like me and libby said right think of a long relationship long long married not married long-term relationship okay you love that person do not be naive okay that along that path you're going to be tested, both of you. You're going to find, you're going to go through blips. You're going to go through testing times where you hate each other. You're going to go through times where you ain't got no money and things are stressful and pandemics and children. Yeah. You are going to be tested where the easier option you think is to go and get that attention from somewhere else. And, or even like not even going and getting attention from someone else. You're just like slobbing around, not putting any effort yeah. in. Liking girls' pictures. Don't do it. Like, look at the picture okay we can all look at a picture of someone else and appreciate that that person's good looking we can all do it <laughs> you can do it in the street we are human we have eyes we can know if yeah, someone's you good know looking. if someone's fit of course and there's nothing wrong with that i can appreciate a good looking woman probably a bit too much however i don't it's just muggy you're you're it's embarrassing for the other person and i feel that is where men and women differ men think that's all right but if you were to do it it's about double standards oh no you can't fucking do it you can't message anyone else this is again where it's you need to just trust the path you're on and trust the process and like libby said you've got to put effort in you can't keep blaming him and he can't keep blaming you unless you actually have that horrible boring cry you sit down conversation actually bang your heads together then i just think end it don't yeah. cheat be a better person and end it a relationship between it whether it's your mate your girlfriend your boyfriend if it starts to not bring out the best in you and that person makes you feel like a piece of shit then it is all right to go actually i love you but no thank you yeah not today and if it is going a bit dry in the bedroom then maybe you need to spice it up a bit if you're only having sex or uh 11 o'clock on a wednesday night and you don't even want to do it because you're so tired maybe you need to spice it up on a saturday and like just put some effort in yeah and maybe he needs to do the same and you need to be able to have that conversation yeah um and that's something that we're going to talk about in our next um episode because we're going to talk all about sex and all the ins and outs on everything to do (laughs) yeah everything to do with it so I just think like if you can take away anything from this it's just put yourself first doesn't matter if you're single or in a relationship the question that you need to leave this podcast with okay I'm not saying it's going to change your life you just need to think in the back of your head am I happy can I can I take control of that happiness is he giving me the ick is he giving me the ick? Is, is he really playing badly at the guitar? Do I trust him? Massive. Or do I want to go for his phone whilst he's having a shit? You need to just make sure that if you want a one night stand, it's clear. If he wants a one night stand, you need to find out. And if you want someone, right, if, you, if you're if you seeing someone right now and you like them, just tell them. Just tell Why them. are you wasting time? Seize the day. Yeah, why waste time? sitting there paranoid about whether he wants to be with you or whether he's seeing someone else just fucking ask him and if he don't if, yeah next yeah yeah <laughs> if he doesn't then you're on to the next Here's one loss cheers yeah. thanks we, fernando see you we, later life's too short we ain't got time but obviously we are in a pandemic so you can't really do anything but maybe go on a zoom date Ugh.
Yeah, I know it'd be a bit shit. You but... could just wear joggers and a nice top, though. Yeah, yeah, no you d- nice you can top. wear pajamas <laughs> and a nice top. Um, but yeah, it's just like I think follow who you are as a person rather than feeling pressured to be in these relationships. And life isn't like films. No, yeah? even Bridget Jones. Like my friend she used to call me Bridget Jones, and even she sorted her life out quicker than me. <laughs> She was like having babies and like married. Yeah, but she was juggling two men. She still weren't happy. So oh, she probably still is. <laughs> Just keep let's yeah to simplify it. Don't overcomplicate your life. No, and do everything that makes you feel good. Stop worrying about what he's doing. Be you, with someone that you want to yeah. rip their pants off. Yeah, you want to have. Sex oh with yeah, all the time. they're coming. not all this, but not all the time. That's another thing that we talk about <laughs> in sex. Like, in a real, you, you ain't gonna want sex all the time. And that's when you start to think, oh, maybe, oh, yeah, it's gone a bit boring. I'll go and get someone else. Then that, then you'll end up with a shit breakup. Then you move on to the next person. Then that honeymoon will die out. And then you'll stop having sex as well. What oh. We just keep going around and round in circles. Yeah. Like a really bad girls allowed song. Like, it's just, <laughs> just take a bit of time. And, and for God's sake, like, just stop. Just stop thinking that you're a psycho in a relationship because that's one thing I could go again it's 50 minutes now Liv like we're gonna we have to wrap this up but I know but it, it's one of my passions like to just try and promote to women you are not a psycho and if if you're starting to feel like that and act like that there's a reason behind it yeah and I think you maybe need to look deeper into it because we've all got an inner psycho and it's how you deal with her because mine yeah. comes out every now and then and I know yours does once a month. Oh yeah, <laughs> but I think in a, when you're, I'm just going to finish off saying, if you're going to be looking for it, you're going to find it, and it's um, whether you're prepared to deal with what you're going to find. We'll give you some tips on how to find it on our um, Instagram. Stories. Yeah, I mean, if for any other psycho bitches, um, we've got loads of tips, but it's just something that I, I mean, how, <laughs> how long have you got? How long have you got? To be honest. Um, probably less time in this podcast of us talking absolute nonsense um but i think next one is going to be uh not next week the week after because it's half term we've got children haven't we yeah so i thought that half term's two weeks yeah it is so we'll be back a week later than normal but it'll be spicy we're going to be talking obviously about sex the good things the bad things and also pressures in live with having sex and how to keep safe basically and we are going to put up um like a question box on our socials so if you've got any questions that you'd like to ask our massive box of knowledge between me and libby about sex something that you don't want to talk to your friends about that'd be great yeah like things that you might find embarrassing or things that you want to know like from a man's perspective um and just yeah like things that you might want to not talk to your friends about yeah but yeah We'll uh, leave you there. And we'll what day s- will this be going out on a Saturday? Saturday. Okay, we'll have a lovely weekend. Thanks um, for listening. If you have, uh, take care. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Why does this always happen? <laughs> <laughs>